In the prayer learned by the children of Fatima, it is said, Lead all souls to heaven, especially those most in need of thy mercy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. Imagine the scene that we just read in today's gospel, and that you're part of the scene. Our Lord gets off of the boat, he had just crossed the lake, and had come into his own town. And there, men with deep faith come to him with an, a sick man, sick he, he with paralysis. And as he approaches, he looks at the man with paralysis, and he says these beautiful words, Confidence, my son, thy sins are forgiven. Imagine that you had been there and heard those very words. What consolation would fill your heart. And all the more so were these words to be spoken to you personally by our blessed Lord. Confidence, son, and he would call you son. That would give you very great hope. And it is of that, that virtue, that I wish to speak to you today. Hope as virtue, as in general, is the desire for any future good, something that you don't yet have, and which is hard to attain, but yet not impossible to attain. Now as a virtue, a supernatural virtue, hope is a supernatural gift of God whereby we trust firmly that God will give us eternal life and all the means necessary to attain it as long as we also do our part. St. Ignatius always said, pray as if everything depended upon God, but act as if all things depended upon you. Based upon the fact that God has the power to do whatever he wants and is willing to grant whatever we need for salvation, he is most willing. When we think of the fact that he became man simply so that he could suffer and die and thus merit eternal life for us, that makes us realize that he is most willing to grant whatever we need for our salvation. And furthermore, our hope is based not on some vague comment that our Lord made, rather it is made on the promises that he has made to give us all of these helps. And that God is no liar. God can make no mistake. St. Therese said, and this depicts the depths of her hope that she possessed in her soul. And she truly meant this. Even though, she says, I had on my conscience all the sins that can be possibly committed, I would go, my heart broken, with sorrow, and throw myself into Jesus' arms, for I know how much he loves the prodigal child who returns to him. That is her thought. And that is how she got to heaven, through that firm hope and confidence in Almighty God. In other words, hope is the virtue that makes it possible to both see our own misery, our sins, and even to feel at times the weight of our miseries and our own human weakness, and yet still look forward and continue to push onward towards the attainment of heaven. That is what the virtue of hope does. It is only the power and the goodness of God and the fact that he has promised to help us that makes us have this type of confidence. St. Philip Neri used to walk around the streets of Rome 
saying, I'm, I'm in despair, I'm in despair. And someone asked him why. He said, well, I am in despair when I think of my own misery, my own wretchedness, but my hope in God, who is so merciful and has made such promises, enlivens my hope. To live by hope, we must be do three things. The first is to be sorry for our sins. Otherwise, it becomes presumption. The second is to make the resolution to change what is evil. And the third is to rely upon the mercy of God, not upon our own strengths, but the mercy of Almighty God. We must remember in the spiritual life, God sees everything in a single glance. He does not see, as we do, past, present, and future. Everything to him is is the present. And so, in the spiritual life, we must remember that God regards what you sincerely desire to become rather than what you are at this moment. So if you are a sinner, filled with misery, God does look at you with compassion. But what makes him so patient is the fact that he looks at what we desire to become. And if we desire to become saints, then we give his fatherly heart so much joy. If we fall into faults, then hope will help us not to fall into discouragement, but rather to return to our Lord in a childlike manner, ask forgiveness, and then renew the resolution of being faithful to his sacred heart. And fourthly, hope helps us to preserve peace of heart despite all of our faults, even should we fall into mortal sin. God forbid. But it helps us to preserve peace of heart. I want to speak now about resolutions. The resolutions that we make along our path to to holiness, they are not to be some vague desires. That's not enough. It is not a resolution made through custom or for more formality, mere formality. That is not enough. To make an ineffectual desire is not enough. In other words, to resolve not to fall into a sin, while at the same time, you are not willing to avoid the occasions of sin. That is not sufficient. Our resolutions must be sincere, and they must be firm, and we must be ready to use the means that God has given us. I never like this maxim that says the road to hell is paved with good intentions. I don't like that. It's half true, and yet it's half cynical. But we have to remember, if by good intentions is meant honest resolves to root out faults and to lead a better, holier life, then the maxim should really say that the road to heaven is paved with good intentions, and not vice versa. This maxim is now more accurate because it is only by making very, very many good resolutions in the spiritual life that we can ever do anything to earn heaven. If we break our resolutions, then we must make them again and again and again and again. For this is what human nature requires. One author says, we are not angels and cannot move with angelic swiftness and decision. Being men, we must act as men, 
and it is human to have to make many efforts before we conquer a bad habit and plant a good one in its place. St. Vincent de Paul says that the works of God are almost always done little by little. One must not pretend to do all in a moment, nor think that all is lost if one does not become perfect at once. We must always advance, but without anxiety. Pray much and make use of the means suggested by the Holy Ghost, paying no attention to the false maxims of the world. One of the greatest means <coughs> to keep your, to help you to keep your resolution, besides the sacraments, is Mary's Holy Rosary. Men and women have been converted after 20, 30, 40 years of unspeakable vice. Many of them absolutely hardened in their mortal sin. And because they persevered praying the rosary, they were given immense graces that softened their hearts and won them over to God. Read today, or during this month of October, those promises that Our Lady made concerning those who are devoted to the rosary. Read them and reread them, because they are beautiful and they are true. To conclude, our thoughts go heavenward today, where our Lord has ascended. And what does he say? He tells us before he ascends, I go to prepare a place for you. God has promised to give us all of the necessary helps, although he did not promise that he would make it easy. We must then trust, despite all that is against us, in these promises and keep moving forward, renewing your good resolutions a thousand times if you have to. But never, ever give up through discouragement and with rosary in hand as your, as your weapon. Then you will one day be taken by the hand and you will be led to the throne prepared by our Lord. And there you will do, as St. Therese says, we will all do. We will sing the mercies of the Lord forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.